Okay, we are doing connecting unit rate, constant, and slope. Um, this means that we've probably, we should have already covered unit rate. We should have covered what the constant of proportionality is. And now we want to see how slope begins to intertwine with all of that. Make sure you put your last name and your first name and your class period. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, putting it all together. Graphs can tell us a lot of information about an equation. We have already learned about y equals kx, which is the equation for a proportional line on a graph. I also know that the k can be determined by calculating y divided by x. However, what happens if the graph is not proportional and does not pass through the origin? Is there a way to figure out if there's a constant that's happening there? The answer to that question is yes, and we're going to be investigating that today. So look at the graph below and answer the following questions. Is this graph proportional? Well, the rules are it needs to be a line and it needs to pass through the origin. Well, the origin is right here. That's our zero, zero point. So therefore, this graph is not proportional. How do we know? It does not pass through the origin. I'm going to make sure that I have typed that correctly for your benefit and mine. Okay, so we need to, I will make sure that that works. Um, but I, let me try that again. We're going to change this. This graph does not pass through the origin. That is why it is not proportional. It doesn't go through the zero, zero origin. Okay. If it is not proportional, can you determine the K, the constant of proportionality? I'm going to answer that, but it's kind of a trick question. We cannot determine the K because the K means that it's proportional. It is not proportional, so we cannot calculate it. However, there is another word that refers to that constant change. It's not the constant change of proportionality. It is called the slope, da, 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 the slope. So when you hear the word slope, you start thinking of skiing down a hill, it's got a slope, or if you don't ski, maybe skateboarding. Um, maybe you've been in a car and it's a really steep hill and it says, truckers, beware, there's a big, um, the slope is something and you have to watch your brakes. Um, but that has to do with the hill, how much of a, and I use my hands when I'm talking, but there you go. So it's the same graph, but the slope of a line is determined by evaluating the change in Y over the change in X, often called rise over run. Well, when we talked about our K, we knew that our K was Y over X. Huh it starts connecting, right? My Y, rise, X, run. Hmm, again, Miss Began has a, well, I have a plan. So um, we need to figure out what that means. Okay, <clears throat> how much does the Y change from one point to the next? If it goes up, it is positive. If it goes down, it is negative. So let's see if I can write on this. What you would do is use your dry erase marker or pencil, depending upon if you have paper or if you're using your computer. So my X will go up and down. So I'm going to go up this line and it looks as if I go up two, and then I draw across. So I'm making what they call a triangle, a slope triangle. Okay. So to get from one point to the next point, I'm going to create little steps up, over, up, over, up, over, or down, over, down, over, down, over. But in this instance, since it's going up, that is a positive. Um, this is going to be two. So it's up two, just like it gives you the instructions. If it goes up, it is positive. If it goes down, it is negative. So I'm going to type two and it's positive because it's going up. Okay, second question, how much does the X change from one point to the next? So I'm gonna change colors because this I'm hoping I changed colors because this is how my Y X changed. 
and it went one, two, three, four, five, six little boxes. And it's positive because it is moving forward. It's not moving backwards, it's moving forward. Okay, so that's positive six. So um, I do not need to put anything other than six. So if the slope is the change in y over the change in x, what is the slope of this line? The formula is this, and it, it looks very, very complicated, but you guys just did it. You just did it. We're not going to go there. That's eighth grade. That's a high school. That's a something standard later. But right now, we can look at this graph, and we can see, oh, my y changed two squares, and my x changed six squares. So if we know that it's still... And I'm going to write it down here. Change in Y over the change in X, but I'm going to put change because I can't just put one point. It took two points to change it. Okay, but we just calculated it. So we figured out that the change in Y was two. It went up two. The change in X was six. So did we just figure out the slope? Two over six? Yes. Can that be reduced into one over three? Yes. Will both of those answers be right when we type it in? Yes. So one slash three or two slash six. Now there's a second half to this. Um, you will be doing that either at the table with me, so listen to instructions, or you will be doing it independently at your desks utilizing the video.